So I saw a few mentions uh, in the past week on the internet of these units, um, even by AT&T themselves, posting some videos of uh, the old um, Viewtron service, which came out in 1983. It was a very early um, Videotex service, which is kind of like the first kind of online graphical um, uh, interface. Um, kind of, you know, very early kind of web type of thing. Um, and uh, this was the box that you would uh, you would use to get out of the service. I believe they only ever had about 15,000 users at its peak, even though it was in about a dozen cities. Um, but the, this thing cost about 900 bucks at the time, in 1983. Or, I think later on, they offered the service for 40 bucks a month, including this, the whole uh, unit itself. Um... <coughs> But it was basically you could get online banking and you know look at your utilities and local news and movies and weather and those kind of things, um, and uh, this is just the the, uh, the entry screen. Um, actually, purchased this box or my father got this box in 1986 to use a service, um, which is here tabs, um, which is called uh, Aviotex Videotex, which was an online flight planning and weather briefing service. And it was a paid service, so I'm sure they put things like games and a bulletin board and other things like that to make it more kind of worth your while. So that you could get like weather and things like that on CompuServe um, and other online services, um, which you can actually you can actually use CompuServe use the same protocol as Videotex. So that's what this is here. All these settings are still original from you know when this was originally uh, when we were originally using this years ago. I don't think I've actually turned this box on since about 1992 or so, which the last time I was actually using it regularly. And that was for this AA Atlanta Advertiser. It was like a 70 or 80 page weekly published classified newspaper. Um, and it was kind of the go-to place to trade goods in Atlanta in, uh, in North Georgia at the time. And uh, I would use this to go on just using ASCII as just a, video, as just a, a text terminal. Um, a dumb terminal to connect to their server, and I, their their ads would be online um, before they were published, so I could get the scoop on finding deals. But um, so uh, you know, do ads is a, was an is an online service by the FAA that still exists on the web now, as far as I know. But um, but uh, it's a, a flight planning and weather briefing service as well. But it was free because since it was produced by the government, so I'm sure that's why that's probably why tabs, aviotex, videotex. Um, didn't uh, wasn't very successful, but if I hit a button here, it'll actually still try to dial. If you hit three, so here's Duats, which is an 800 number. And of course, it won't do anything. The screen would refresh and update as soon as it started actually getting data. But um, you can see the phone on the front, the phone light on the front of the unit is on. If I hit the button, on it terminates it. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was the main thing we'd, we'd use it for, but Compu, uh, CompuServe was expensive at the time, and you had to pay long distance to use it, so we didn't actually use it very often. Even though this box is pretty good hardware, it was, as I said, I think it was 900 bucks, and it was new in 1983. And I believe it uses a, an 8080 or an 8088 um, processor, and uh, it has 48K of RAM, and... Uh, um, and I, either a 4800 or a 1200 baud modem, I, I forget exactly what, but it was faster than the Commodore 64 I had with a 300 baud VIC modem, so using CompuServe on this um, was, uh, was, a, was uh, preferable to actually using the Commodore. Um, keyboard's pretty nice, a little wireless internet thing. I mean, this is very similar to Web TV, this whole setup, which was 15 years or so later. And they say about 15,000, you know, server, or subscribers were in the service. Both of these have numbers under 15,000. And then I guess a date code in 84. Um, on the back of the unit, there's not much to it, just your phone lines, your power in. This is different than some units. I've only seen a couple other pictures on the internet of these. There aren't many of them around to begin with, but um, but this one has a, an, out, uh, an outboard power brick. For DC, some other ones I've seen actually just have a, a, a computer plug, an IEC AC plug, um, printer port, 
which uh, uses a very specific model of Sony thermal printer, if I recall correctly. We couldn't find one to be able to print out um, uh, weather briefings. And of course, composite video and RF out. Most TVs back then were would have interfaced with RF. Another 1984 code. But if we go into the settings here, so here's my little terminal test, key test. Select. Oops. Select return gets us back. Load. Uh, directory is where you actually change all the settings. My camera is not cooperating with this television set. But here's the Atlanta Advertiser setup that I was using and it was just simple ASCII and then I don't know what these other characters are. I do remember I had to do a couple of carriage returns to actually get the thing to work with this thing before it would do anything but give me a black screen. Um, screen adjustment. I can actually move it up and down. Pretty nice hardware, and of course, uh, data base access is back to the title screen. I don't know what music is, and this thing was not capable of audio, as far as I know, so I don't even know what that was. Um, but at any rate, it's unique hardware. The Videotron service uh, I'd never seen on this. I'd only ever seen the text-based stuff, and then CompuServe. Um, so I don't know what the original service is like, other than just seeing AT&T's recent uh, videos of what it was like um, just uh, within the last couple of days. But I figured I'd dig this out and put a video up since there's very, you know, very little info on these things out there anymore. But uh, but that's it, the AT&T Scepter.